So greetings, my name's Udgar Parsons, founder of Growing Spaces, and I've been building greenhouses for 25 years. And I'd like to share some of the things we've learned about keeping your greenhouse cool in the summer, because greenhouses are meant to trap heat and they're gonna get hot, no doubt about it. So we have developed what we call a growing dome greenhouse that stays cool even in the middle of summer. So here we have a hot day in Colorado, 90 degrees, and a temperature inside our growing dome greenhouse is 90 degrees. So we've succeeded in creating a space that's equitable for plants to grow. So firstly, how do you measure the temperature? The first rule is never to have your thermometer in the sun. It'll immediately show 120, 130. So you have to find a shady spot for your thermometer and don't put it under a black plant pot because the plant pot will get hot and of course the thermometer will read a high temperature. So, and also remember that as the sun tracks across the sky, what might be a shady spot in the afternoon in the morning is not a shady spot and so you get false readings. So let's talk about all the different methods. We have seven methods I'm gonna share with you as to how to keep your greenhouse cool. Firstly, plants will tell you if they're too hot, if the greenhouse is too hot. Now you might go into your greenhouse and it's 95 degrees, you go, oh, it's really hot in here. But look at the plants, are they okay? You've got tomatoes, are they wilting? And if the plants are okay, and we've got some fine plants in here, they're saying, no, we're quite happy at 95 degrees. But if it's 110, they may complain and wilt, so then you'll know it's too hot. So that's the first thing, is figuring out what is too hot. So the first main weapon we've evolved to keep our greenhouse cool is the plants themselves. And here you see a beautiful grapevine. It's got grapes. Can't see too many of them, but there are grapes. And we planted it on the west side because you want that early morning sun to warm things up. But by the afternoon, it's hot enough in here. So what we've done is we've planted huge foliage trees on the west. Now, plants themselves, especially large foliage plants, keep your greenhouse cool in two different ways. Firstly, and most importantly, they shade the soil. So if I put my hand on the soil down here, it's quite cool. Whereas if I go and put my hand on the gravel down here, that's about 20 to 30 degrees warmer. So plants shade the soil and they keep the soil cool. So in here, we've got about 40 tons of soil. If that 40 tons of soil is up at 110 or 120 because it's bare dirt, this dome will be a lot, lot hotter than if we have 40 tons of soil, which is at 75 or 80 degrees, which we have here. So plants shade the soil. The second thing plants do is they themselves act as evaporative coolers. You water the plants and they transpire their moisture, they bring up nutrients, and they transpire the moisture through their leaves. So these leaves act as evaporative coolers. I have been in a growing dome on a hot sunny day that's got big trees and it's actually cooler than the outside temperature. So that's how effective plants with big leaves are. And we like to uh, have plants on the south side that grow up and we'll show you some of those, grow up and shade the south sun from shining on the soil. So that's a very important thing. So plants themselves are the first weapon. The second thing that we have that helps to keep our greenhouses cool is a water tank. Now here we've got 3,000 gallons of water that's cool. It's about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature outside is 90. The temperature is trying to get up to over 100, but that huge amount of water, thermal mass, keeps the dome cool. So that's a huge resource 
And if you have a regular greenhouse, you could put some barrels of water, but it's really hard to get enough water to keep it cool, but every little helps. So that's our second weapon is the water tank. And we've got aquatic plants. We've got goldfish growing in there, happily swimming around. And so it's a beautiful thing as well as being highly functional. And the dark painted surface is metal. And so that's constantly exchanging heat and cool with the environment. So that's a wonderful weapon. Now the third thing we've got going is airflow. And so with our growing domes, we've got vents that open and close automatically. And I'm gonna show you up at the top here, we've got these two top vents that have wax inside a piston and they open and close automatically. So when it gets hot, they open. When it gets cold, they close. And the beautiful thing about the growing dome, it has a natural convection system whereby the hot air rises and escapes. And we have low vents that bring in cool air at the lower level to replace the hot air that's being lost. The next thing we have are actual cooling fans. And we're gonna show you different types of cooling fans and so let's go over here to look at one of our cooling fans. So this is a 110 volt cooling fan, but we also have direct drive cooling fans that operate from a solar panel and they bring in extra cool air to replace the hot air that's going out the top window. And in terms of airflow, I don't know if you can see here, through here we've got a screen door and the beauty of the screen door especially if you make it face southwest, is that that's bringing in more cooling air. So a screen door is a really wonderful weapon. So let's go to another dome and we'll show you some of the other features. So this is our 18 foot dome and here we have a shade cloth. And so there are different types of shade cloth. You can either hang them on the inside or put them on the outside. And so the thing about shade cloth is sure it cuts down the brightness of the sun and the heat, but it, if it's a dark colored shade cloth, it will get hot. So if you put shade cloth that's dark colored on the inside, then that's gonna get hot and you're actually increasing the amount of heat. So we've discovered this kind of shade cloth is called Illuminet, which is actually made of aluminum and it doesn't get hot at all. So what happens, it cuts down the glare of the sun and cuts down the heat inside your growing dome greenhouse. So what we recommend is a 50% shading and also not to cover the whole of the dome. So you get the early morning sun and then it's put up on the south side, but it allows the late afternoon sun to come in as well. Cause you don't want to have too much shade it makes the plants leggy. So now here you see one of our lower windows. That's an opening window. It's a very clever window. This is a tube of wax. But when it gets hot, it pushes out the piston and the piston might move one inch, but the leverage of the actuator of the opener opens it by 12 inches. So what happens is you've got the hot air going out the top and I can feel that cool air coming in to keep the dome cool. So that's an automatic window opener. Come back at seven o'clock tonight, it'll be closed. So the sixth method of how we keep our dome cool is what we call our undersoil heating and cooling system or our undersoil climate control system. And so what we've got here is a fan that's driven direct dry by a solar panel and it's blowing hot air through pipes buried in the soil and we'll show you those pipes in a minute so what we've got here because we've got shaded soil we've got 75 degree soil we've got 95 degree air blowing through that soil and so the air comes out at 85 degrees so we're actually cooling the dome by blowing the hot air through the soil so that's a really effective system. And the beautiful thing is it's free. It costs nothing to run it because it's run by a solar panel. So this is our 26 foot dome. 
and this is actually cooler than the outside. It's a greenhouse, you get it's cooler in here than the outside. And there are two reasons for this. One is this huge amount of foliage. We've got two large fig trees and they themselves are acting as evaporative coolers and shading the soil. So this dome is really amazing. It's, it's cooler than the outside. So also it has the undersoil air, air control system. And so this climate control system is blowing the hot air through cool soil and it's coming out cool. Let me show you the other end of that where the pipes go into the soil. This is our undersoil heating cooling system. This is the other end of it. So what's happening is these pipes are buried one foot down in the soil and they go all the way around to that little box we showed you. And basically what's happening is the air has been sucked through the pipes, going through the cool soil and making the air cool. So that's the other end of our undersoil heating cooling system otherwise known as the climate control system. So the final way to keep your greenhouse cool is to use the power of moisture evaporating water which in itself creates a cooling effect of up to 20 degrees. So there's two ways to do this. One is to use a swamp cooler and we've got actually a solar powered swamp cooler. And what a swamp cooler does it blows air through a pad which is kept moist by water trickling down or being sucked up a pad, a cooling pad. And the cooling pad is designed to let air flow through it. So this fan is driven by a solar panel. There's a little pump that pumps water through a cooling pad on the outside. And this air is probably 20 degrees cooler than the ambient temperature of 90 degrees. So a swamp cooler is one way to go. The, the last way we use the power of water to cool a greenhouse is by the use of misting systems. And we got these misting systems in here, but the thing about misting systems is you have to be careful not to run them all the time or else they'll create a huge amount of moisture in your greenhouse that might create mold and fungus. So if you're having a misting system, you have to put it on some kind of timer. There are different types of timer that run it for a length of time every so often. Or there's a humidistat controlled misting system controller that allows it to get to a certain humidity and then turns it off. So here's, here's one of our misting systems and it creates a beautiful cooling spray and it really cools the dome by up to 20 degrees when it's uh, operating. So very useful, but use judiciously so you don't create too much moisture and create mold and fungus. So we hope you enjoyed our video about how to cool your greenhouse in the summer. But the beautiful thing about our growing dome is they have very many of the same systems that help to keep the greenhouse warm in the winter. So we've got a year-round greenhouse. Check out some of our snow videos. We have videos with two foot of snow. You go inside and the plants are happy and thriving. And even with sub-zero temperatures in the Rocky Mountains, you can grow all winter. So it's hard to imagine that in the middle of summer but go check out our other videos, join and subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out our blog and sign up for our newsletter. So happy growing and lots of wonderful harvest all fall.